so i did not intend on making this video this morning so i'm just not prepared but i think i should document this before i go any further so um working on judas this morning as usual just trying to get my morning stuff done to judas before i tackle the other stuff i have anyways that's not the point of what i'm about to say so um speed we know thus far the speed you know that has been great on judas and i have been driving it around i so far have gotten it up to i think gate was around eight pounds i think i got it up to like 11 pounds just street tuning and whatnot if the um via data logs which will be in the video that i may post before this one but i've been tuning and for the most part i seem to be running into an issue and josh stewart is the best the first issue i ran into with speedrino was that the vehicle speed sensor was a vr sensor and there was no way short of wiring a vr conditioner to convert that um signal into the digital square wave that the speedrino can accept there was no way to do that easily so what i did was i repurposed the cam signal and which you can add a vr conditioner to the ecu but long story short um josh wrote the code so in the next firmware update that should be available where you can use the cam signal input to the ecu to do vss which is very cool i'm not sure of any other ecu to my knowledge that can do that in that price range anyways um second of all i had an issue with oil pressure protection kicking in and um, it's a, it didn't have a delay, so now he wrote the code for that, so that is going to be in the next one as well. So Josh, you are a legend, but I'm running into another issue where um, high in my high RPM, I seem to be getting some noise on my RPM signal and it's causing sync loss and causing some weird behavior. So um, there's no easy way to do this. Typically, you'd recommend get shielded wire and do everything. I am not using the factory cast disc anymore. I'm using a 36 minus one cast disc. So um, normally you would shield the wires. And if you have a VR, that usually works beautifully or increase filtering. So what I did, I increased filtering. And for the most part, it seems to be good with um the filtering set to the highest level which is aggressive with speedrino um but with that aggressive filtering then the car struggles to start up since the the signal from the the distributor the cast is so weak at idle and cranking that it, it the car sometimes struggles to start up so we need some variability so we need something that will give me low filtering at low rpm and then high filtering at high rpm i'm not sure if josh will be able to put that in to the firmware before then but before that what i actually meant to <laughs> record this video for now three minutes in was to say that i um today is the 20 20 something today the 23rd so seven eight so i am roughly two to three weeks away from and i have some other harnesses i need to water pump yeah so i have another harness i need to finish up for a customer um i need to have some remote tools that i need to catch up on and some base maps that i need to send out and i need to finish judas so and now of, yeah so now what i'm considering doing is i'm not sure if i want to throw the link back in there because i'm not sure i'm going to get that firmware from josh before all of that and i can run the car on the highest filtering but then the car will just struggle to start up so there's no in between with that and the car is working perfectly fine in the link i'm wondering if i should just throw the link back on just to get to the races or hope that josh gets that out to me josh if you listening or watching then i hope you get it out to me um i do have another harness there ready to go so just need some minor um stuff done to it to throw the link back on and it should be perfect i can probably get that done in two to three hours maybe but i love speed and i want to see speed you know work i want to speak take speed i actually have a dino appointment book today is wednesday for saturday so i want to make it and i want to actually make it with the speed you know but if the speed is just going to be um a little bit troublesome before then then i may do the link i don't know what to do hopefully you guys will let me know what i should do five minutes in so <laughs> this is the short one 
link speedwino i want to do speedwino recap i want to do speedwino speedwino current days missing one little thing to make the car work the way i want to do it a link will do that but the link will just require another two or three hours of me just uh throwing in a new harness so i don't know we'll see all right so building up on last the last video uh, where i spoke of the limitations of speed we know uh, the firmware currently and my time crunch i am now i've decided to go with the put the link back on just to get the car dynoed and ready for the upcoming race and then after that i will do the experimentation with the speed we know. so here's what we're working with currently all right so i before me but before you guys as well i have a new harness i did not build this one this one was built for by my friend partner business partner roger over in new york so this is sort of like a how do i put it spot level harness hobby level harness all right so it's already wired up for the link it did come with some documentation let me get this to you guys he did an awesome job so i have all of my pin mapping and for relay and blah 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 everything is here i did want to experiment with some combo sensors so this one will be for oil and oil temp and oil pressure in one sensor coolant temp and coolant pressure is the same sensor have a bosch knock sensor it's already pre-wired for my dash and everything so he did and now the only thing is that with that um <laughs> it was my job to um get the part numbers for some of the connectors like injectors the cast and the tps and i got them wrong so now my job now is to modest and then put on the correct um injector cast and tps connectors throw it back on the car and get the car started i hope to do that in a few hours and be ready for the dyno in a few days so let's get working so it's the following day <laughs> i'm still tired I'm very tired so let me give you guys a rundown of what happened last night so i have the harness pretty much installed i have everything disconnected there and laying around and i have a very good reason for that so if you look on the inside this is my wiring mess so i had to be dissecting through the harness the fuse box which is this and everything this is my pile of wiring so i spent the better part of yesterday installing this into the car and long and short of it is when i went to turn on the key switch the ignition switch would stay on oh my god not feeling well at all um long and short of it i think we have we roger we spent hours on the phone last night with me and him just going through the wiring because he built on it we think there might be a small fault in the ignition switch but it might be at the fuse box so might be something very easy to do but we need the diagrams which he doesn't have right now or at least we that's what we're thinking so long and short of it is he's currently out of out of the u.s and he's down in Guyana. So the plan is I want to troubleshoot that harness this morning and worst case scenario if I cannot figure out where the fault is um, then I'm going to have to throw back my original harness in the one I modified for the speed unit. I'm going to have to unmodify it to put the link issue back in it because I don't have much time um, my daily chores my work is taking a back seat but yesterday was a bit unproductive it's first day um i have a dino appointment sunday and i don't have a harness in the car so i'm gonna tackle that now <laughs> let's see how the day goes so after about well i'm not sure how long <laughs> after a while finally have the harness repinned now for the link g4 ecu and for the most part i just need to install it and connect 
this end of the harness to my switch panel and other than that i have to let me show you um, yesterday when i swapped the new harness i put in some combo sensors right here so yeah this one right here so i need to remove this and put back my old ntk style sensors so i have one of these here and one on the oil sensor these are combo sensors so they can do both temperature my intention was to do both temp coolant temperature and coolant pressure and oil pressure and and oil temperature but i need to swap all of that i'm hungry <laughs> so let me get i think i'll put the harness in and i'll do the mechanical bits afterwards okay and we're just about done and this is in, everything is in. I already went there and I test fired it because if you guys are tired of seeing me troubleshooting on camera, right? So what I ended what I went ahead and I did was I removed the 36 miles one crank trigger and I put it back on the stock Nissan trigger since the link has no problem running that speed we know. And a lot of issues cannot handle the stock Nissan 360 cast properly. So again, I have my link software open. Power on. All right. Um, oil temp. I don't have an oil temp sensor now hooked up. Um, let's see. Everything is good. 30 PSI fuel pressure. All right. So let's go ahead and fire it up. You can see everything is tucked away. So essentially the cold start 24 degrees. Outside temp is 19. Started up a little bit rich. So it's running on the link now. And I'm tired of <laughs> messing the harnesses for for now. So still have a little bit of cleaning up to do, but for the most part everything is looking good. So we've got my radiator fan. Yeah, now, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do the cleaning up now. Just never disappoints. So I'm getting <laughs> you can hear that noise in the background. So I'm getting ready to go and do a test drive on the ECU. Stop now. And for some reason the wheel did not want to turn. And I yeah. That was the wheel just releasing the last of the pressure. So if you guys can see here, I look in here and I see this giant crack on my rear disc. Um Trying to drive the car out of on the on the where it's back. Yeah, it's just rolling forward and bricks is on it. But this wheel was bound up very right. And apparently something is seized in there. And more than likely just a caliper. Maybe from it being packed for a while. Other than that, the disc is cracked. So I don't think we're gonna be making it to the dyno in two days time but we'll see what we can do about it nah not gonna make it to the dyno but i mean it's a 35 year old car probably an original the original um rare brick components so i'm just gonna use the opportunity to i guess freshen it up hand bricks are already not working so i'm gonna use that opportunity to just clean up everything but a little bit disappointed but i mean what to do it's a 35 year old car <laughs> 